Good afternoon, UAW family. It's happened again. Moments before this broadcast, we have had a major breakthrough that has not only dramatically changed negotiations, but it's going to change the future of our union and the future of our industry. We were about to shut down GM's largest moneymaker in Arlington, Texas. The company knew those members were ready to walk immediately. And just that threat has provided a transformative win. GM has now agreed in writing to place their electric battery manufacturing under our National Master Agreement. We've been told for months that this is impossible. We've been told the EV future must be a race to the bottom. And now we've called their bluff. What this will mean for our membership cannot be understated. The plan was to draw down engine and transmission plants and permanently re replace them with low-wage battery jobs. We had a different plan, and our plan is winning at GM. And we expect it to win at Ford and Stellantis as well. So today, we're going to give you some updates on the state of bargaining. If it wasn't clear already, things move fast. It's hard to give an update that won't be obsolete by the time the update's done. So here's a snapshot and a punchline. Here's the snapshot GM has been falling behind. Today, under the threat of a major financial hit, they leapfrogged the pack in terms of a just transition. And here's the punchline. Our strike is working, but we're not there yet. Everything we've done to this point has been with one goal in mind, to win a record contract that reflects the Big Three's record profits and the historic sacrifices our members have made to generate those profits. We've been very public about our demands and about our expectations and about our priorities. Everybody and their brother knows that we've been fighting for economic justice for a just transition, for cost of living allowance, for meaningful wage increases, for retirement security, to end tears, and to win work-life balance and more. I wish I were here to announce a tentative agreement at one or more of these companies, but I do want to be really clear. We are making significant progress. In just three weeks, we have moved these companies further than anyone thought was possible. So let's take a look at where things started and where we are now. Looking at wages, our first wage proposal from the companies was a 9% raise from Ford. Now, with members standing up everywhere, three weeks into the strike, our top offer is 23% from the same company. That's two and a half times higher than they started. It's not where we need to be, but it's a hell of a lot further along. Both GM and Stellantis are behind Ford at around 20%, and we think they can catch up and then some. Looking at cost of living allowance, we heard for years that cost of living allowance was a thing of the past and we'd never get it back, that we couldn't go back to a cost of living adjustment formula that protected against the worst of inflation. Suddenly, Three weeks into our stand-up strike, we've got two of the big three automakers committed to returning to our 2007 cost of living formula. Ford and Stellantis have agreed to reinstate cost of living allowance, and GM isn't far behind, and we're going to get them there. Looking at temps, you know, let's talk about the temps who have been abused and exploited by the big three for way too long. This part of the workforce used to be a small group, used only to cover for short periods. Now, they're an entire subsection of our union who have very few rights, low pay, and no certainty with their future. In three weeks, we've won raises for temps to $20 an hour at GM and Stellantis and $21 an hour at Ford. All three have made commitments around converting temps, but there's still a lot of work to be done both on the wages and the conversions. Still, 
we're making big strides that will end up changing the lives of thousands of our members. When it comes to wage progression, you know, it's another serious area of progress that we've been working on, and that's looking at the progression it takes to get the full pay. Going into these negotiations, it took eight years for workers to make it up to top rate. Taking almost a decade to get to the top wage is unacceptable. Since the Great Recession, the length of the progression has reduced the quality of life for tens of thousands of UAW members. We have cut that timeline down to three years at Ford, while GM and Stellantis are still behind at four-year progressions. We need to keep pushing, but it means that all those temps we convert will go from second-class citizen to top rate well within the life of this contract. That's a big deal. Looking at profit sharing, all three companies wanted concessions on profit sharing, and we said, hell no. Not only did we beat back Ford's concessionary profit sharing formula, we made enhancements. We have also successfully beat back the concessionary demands being made by GM and Stellantis. Looking at job security, two weeks ago, we let Ford off the hook in our strike expansion because they agreed to some core job security proposals, like the right to strike over plant closures, which our union has never had. Last week, at the last minute, Stellantis agreed to the right to honor picket lines and made other important moves on job security. And now, today, because of our power, GM has agreed to lay the foundation for a just transition. Looking at skilled trades, all the big three wanted to, to do was give little or nothing. We're fighting for a $2 an hour tool allowance. Now, thanks to our stand-up strike strategy, Ford has given up a $1.50 tool allowance. Stellantis has given up a dollar an hour. But GM is still refusing to budge. Looking at retirement security, finally, we're still fighting hard to win retirement security for both our pre-2007 and post-2007 hires. For those members who still have a pension, we know you've gone far too long without an increase, and we're pushing hard to change it. For those members who never got a pension or post-retirement health care, we're fighting like hell for real retirement security. But the companies are fighting like hell to keep our retirement uncertain and insecure. As people who give their lives to these companies, we never should have lost those rights. This strike is about righting the wrongs of the past and winning justice for all of our members. I also want to lift up one major change from the past in this round of negotiations when we're talking about the subcommittees that bargain a lot of this stuff. For the first time, we're on track to get all of our subcommittee issues addressed. Subcommittees cover everything from work rules to discipline to scheduling. They include demands and proposals our members submit in advance of bargaining. The demands we debate over at our special bargaining convention. In the past, these demands a lot of times were simply shut down when it was time to settle the contract, and many of those issues were ignored. This time around, all of our subcommittees are being seriously addressed and we've made a ton of progress in these areas. We're doing things differently, and we're getting results. So that's where we are on some of our core bargaining priorities. But here's the bottom line. We are winning. We are making progress, and we are headed in the right direction. And what has moved the needle is our willingness to take action, to be flexible, to be aggressive when we have to, and to be strategic. Throughout this strike, I've been heartened to see our members talking about and debating our strategy. We're thinking together about the core question of the labor movement. How do working class people build the power we need to win what we deserve? So let's talk strategy. I want to be clear on one thing. Our goal throughout this process has always been to win a record contract. Our mission as your elected leadership, is to fight like hell for the best possible deal. 
We don't strike for the hell of it. We know what it's like to hold a picket sign at 3 a.m. We know what it's like to be unsure when you'll get a real paycheck. The CEOs are trying to trivialize our strike, and they're saying it's just theatrics. You know what? Yeah, we're loud, and we're proud about our fight. We want the public to understand our fight and to side with us, as poll after poll shows they do. But it's not about theatrics. It's about power. The power we have is working class people. We've shown the big three that we're not afraid to use it. And we have shown the big three that we are ready for a record contract when they are. Theatrics don't cause companies to agree to double digit pay increases. Theatrics don't result in a right to strike over plant closures. Theatrics don't win cost of living allowance. Theatrics don't result in GM battery cell manufacturing to be under our national agreement. Strikes and the threat of strikes by a unified membership are what delivers. Our goal here is not just to pound the table and show management how angry we are. And we are angry. Our members are angry. And they should be. We've made that crystal clear to these companies at the bargaining table. And that anger has moved these companies to a point. But our goal is not just to get mad and shut it all down. Our goal is to outsmart and outorganize corporate America. I'm reminded of the words of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. reflecting on the UAW of a former generation when Dr. King said, power is the ability to achieve purpose. Power is the ability to affect change and we need power. So what is power? Walter Ruther once said that power is the ability of a labor union like the UAW to make the most powerful corporation in the world, General Motors, say yes when it wants to say no. That's power. And I'll tell it to you straight. The billionaires and company executives think us auto workers are just dumb. They think we don't get it. They think we only understand the power of a supervisor yelling at us or an assembly line coming at us. They look at me and they see some redneck from Indiana. They look at you and see somebody they would never have over for dinner or let ride on their yacht or fly on their private jet. They think they know us, but us auto workers know better. We may be foul mouthed, but we're strategic. We may get fired up, but we're disciplined. And we may get rowdy, but we're organized. Not everything is about pulling out the bazooka. We've been very careful about how we escalate this strike, and we have designed this strategy to increase pressure on the companies, not to hurt them for its own sake, but to move them, to get them to say yes when they want to say no. And today is a perfect example of that. We know their pain points, we know their money makers, and we know the plants they really don't want to see struck. And they know we've got more cards left to play. We're not going to let one company fall behind and wait for movement at another table. We're not going to let them sit back and lowball us while others make progress. We expect results at every company. And we've been crystal clear about how you catch a strike and how you avoid one. Two weeks ago, Ford agreed to some core job security proposals, showing us they were ready to bargain. Last week, Stellantis did the same thing. And this week, GM did something that was unthinkable until just today. They agreed to put the future of this industry under our national agreement. This victory is a direct result of the power of our membership. It's your willingness to stand up when called. It's your commitment to winning what you are owed. The companies see it. The world sees it. And today, I was ready to call on one of GM's biggest and most important plants to stand up. And it was that threat that brought GM to the table. The big three know we're not messing around. And they know if they want to avoid further strikes, 
then they will have to pony up. And I've heard members who want to bring down the hammer, strike all the truck plants, hit the big three where it hurts. And there is a time and place for that. And believe me, if the big three don't continue to make progress, that time's going to be coming real soon. We're not going to wait around forever. We're not here to start a fight. We're here to finish one. And to our counterparts at the big three, we'll see you at the bargaining table. Tomorrow, we're going to join our striking union family out in Chicago for a stand-up rally. Today, we made GM say yes when they'd rather say no. Next up is Ford and Stellantis and three record contracts. Thank you.